I'd say I lose to JD more, but Smokey does more things that surprise me. Interesting. Let's see what they'll surprise us with in this set. See that? I like uh, I like those kind of transitions. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> oh, that I was like... a cool shine grab. That was not yeah. very cool. Okay. I've noticed that um, a lot of the openings are coming from overextensions in their punishes. From both of them or from one in For both of them. Like, so there will be a, a crouch cancel shine or just a get up shine that comes out in time, breaks the punish, and then turns it around. Double shine, wow. Shine is so polarizing. Yeah, that was... Um, it feels silly. Double shine at the ledge feels silly because it sets up just uh, the easiest, like mix-up situation for Fox to win and close out the stock. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oof. I, I don't know about that one. I feel like these players are past the level where side B from the ledge is going to net you anything. So at a, a certain point, side B from the ledge just becomes another mix-up. It um, works maybe once a game, but if you aren't ready to react to it, then you will get back on stage, mm -hmm. and there's a decent chance that you clip them with it. Yeah. So it's a, it's a kind of cheesy option, but if it works, then it works. I feel like so many players, especially nowadays, because so many players are like giving you extra space at the ledge because they're respecting your ledge stash, uh -huh. that it just makes it easier to react to the side B. It's not like you're right there, you know what I mean? It depends. Like, if, if it hasn't come up as a, a situation or an interaction the entire set, then it might work. I think it's better with Falco because this is uh, slightly harder to react to. Does Fox have bad moves? Uh, Especially these no. two players who are obsessed with forward air, they make me like re-question the whole character. Like the, the moves that what people think fair is bad, that's it really. JD describes fair as an aerial jab. Yeah, it's, it's and just, it's, um, it's really good descriptive uh, descriptor of it. it je fair is really cool. It extends for combos at higher percents against floaties. If you're like traveling down from a platform to the main stage, then you can carry people with you. And uh, all of his moves, apart from that, are pretty great. Smash attacks all have their uses. Even the more situational moves, like side B, really just side great. B. They're all it. It has its purpose. All oh, that was clean. Oh my God, JD, you're nuts. JD, you're nuts. He covers the tournament winner. Ooh, he gets a little uh, slide off on the top. Platform. I like the yeah, attempt at the tech, but it's it's actually kind of unfortunate he got the slide mm, off there. Yeah. I think these guys are going to keep it all battlefield this set. They did it on their uh, winner's final set. How did that set go? Uh, JD kind of trampled them. Um, okay. Actually, no. I, I want to say, Barry, what was the set count of their winner's finals? Oh, oh yeah. that was gross. That was beautiful. Oh. Puts the icing on the cake. Sometimes when people go for the Armada Shine, I wonder why they don't just grab ledge and um, do it invincibly. Like, it's really cool when they hit it, but it seems like they're adding an extra layer of risk that they don't need to take in a lot of situations. Right. I think in that particular situation, though, there was no way that he could have gone from the ledge to out there. Yeah. Actually, no. Could you, um... What's the name of the invincible ledge jump? I have no idea. Do you know what I'm talking about, though? Where you, you like, let go of the ledge and then immediately, like, get a wall jump so that way you get out far... I, um, I know the tech you're talking about. It's only doable on certain stages. Maybe he could have done that, but that's like the only thing I can really think of that could have worked with invincibility there. I, I like there are situations where people will be straight below ledge and they'll, uh, they'll go down and they'll get clipped by the flame. Yeah. All right, we, we're seeing um, rolls in the spot dodges. Kind of like gets that roll out of him and then doesn't do anything with it. Yeah. I've, hmm. Well, it's uh tough to react to those rolls. Oh my god, he does it again. And if you're too late, then you get shined or otherwise counter hit. So I kind of agree because the weight is just um, it's putting like the burden on Smokey to initiate contact. Great angle. Smokey looking um. 
It's not even that he's looking lost. I, I think he's just falling for little things that JD's doing. Yeah, and JD is just, uh, he's hitting his punishes. He's closing out stocks when he has to. Like right there, uh, Smokey really needed to finish that out. Move on to the next stock, which he does, but it's little situations like that where they mm. could get back, where you really have to close it out. That yeah. makes the difference. They add up fast. Oh. I, I wonder if he thought that was going to go into a tech oh. situation. That was really cool. What, did he like nair or something? He drilled him off stage. Oh, drill. Okay. Yeah, he took him down with him. I respect that. But also the uh, ledge dash immediate turnaround forward tilt to cover side B. Mm -hmm. It was a really creative option. Yeah, JD is a very creative player. So uh, do you and know how the sets between these two usually go? Um, no, I actually do not. But today it's definitely been going in uh, JD's favor. Unfortunate miss on the grab. He gets the opening, but he uh, doesn't capitalize. JD is a very creative player. Um, he's always trying stuff out in mid-set. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I like to test things in friendlies, but doing it on the spot. Well, like, this is, um, even though it's a monthly, it's still a, a smaller local with people who we're all fairly familiar with. Mm -hmm. So I understand why he's going for it, especially when he has a, a set cushion to work with. Yeah. He was, he was testing out a lot, though, during their winter final <laughs> set. I mean, if he won the set, then it worked out. Yeah. Ooh. That was not supposed to be a forward air. I don't even know what that could have possibly have been. Slide off. Good coverage. Good cleanup. I feel like it's so rare that you see that situation work out where they cover like them going to stage and them going to ledge. Yeah, Fox is one of the only characters who can actually do that. Mm. But back air from ledge is incredible. Even at that, it's so hard to time. And JD is. It looks looking. like Smokey's gonna take this game. Let's not count JD out. Not yet, at least. Ooh, that nair. Had it been a second back air, I think he would have been fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a creative SD. Uh, <laughs> creative. <laughs> Definitely a creative SD. I wonder if he'll stay true to the battlefield trend we've been seeing. I feel like yeah, if there's a player like here it. to break it, it's going to be JD. So where do you think you would go? Is he uh, adept at the chain grab? I have no idea. I feel like he's a stadium Dreamland kind of fox. He likes the space. Uh, probably more so Dreamland than stadium. I can see that. He's always been a pain for me to fight pretty much on, on any stage. Like on Fountain, he handles platforms well. Yeah, he's actually a... Uh, he thinks... Uh, like I don't know if you've seen his sets with like Big Kid and whatnot. Uh, all the other puffs. But he'll actually go like start on Dreamland. Huh. And he's just like, this is a good stage for Fox. Well, yeah, he's willing to just not interact and, uh, yeah, and to abuse the stage how he needs to. Good yeah. clean up from Smokey. And he opts to ban FOD, which that kind of makes sense, I think. Yeah, I get that. Oh, oh no, dude. I, don't, I wonder what happened, dude. It's, uh, momentum's weird. Sometimes it just swings and you're, you feel powerless when it's happening. Especially when, uh, Smokey's hitting his punishes. The stocks just kind of disappear after one or two mistakes and you're down two stocks. These guys, uh, they punish at a high enough level that you aren't going to have that many interactions per game. Mm -hmm. And so that makes the ones that happen count all that much more. Good shines. Wow. Drill him and then got grabbed. <laughs> what, uh, what percent is up air, up throw, up air kill in this matchup? Good question. I want to say JD is at the percent where it would kill. Yeah, right I was now. wondering because he went through up throw, uh, up throw back air. And I was wondering if it would have killed. 
Um, Smokey or JD? Smokey went for it. Mm. I know JD's very weird. He's a big fan of up throw and air. Up throw and air is good. Mm. I, I appreciate when any move other than um, up air comes out after an up throw because it always catches me off guard. Good, Nairs. What is this music? <laughs> I know, I, I have, but this is a melee tournament. You know what is I mean? Is that what's playing? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Good oh music my god, today. that was really just not optimal DI from JD. I feel like once you get hit by two up airs by Fox, you gotta start going off stage. Well, it's uh, it's risky to go off stage. It's scary. Yeah, but like, on a, especially in a stage like Battlefield where the top platform just works out so well to hit them with the stairway to heaven. See, I, I get why he made the choice though, because it was his last stock on. It was his last stock of the game, so like, if you're going off stage, that could just be it. Mm, yeah. Or if you di in, you can hope that they um they mess up the chain. You can you can smash the eye. There's a little bit more counterplay, at the cost of taking damage. All right, we're going battlefield for game five. On the verge of a reverse 3-0 from Smokey. Not surprising at all, though. Smokey is rock solid mentality. Yeah, he's um he's always confident that he's going to win. There's plenty of confidence in his play. One thing I find interesting in these two is um, how they cover landing on platforms. Yeah, Jaden really likes the nair. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of nairs, a lot of back airs. Not much up air to mm. fall down and continue the combo, but mostly just going for stage position and uh, taking the damage when they get it. But as we were saying that, I like the wave land up smash. It was a good read. There you go, cleans up the stock before JD pushes his lead too much more. Let's say we're in a, a one interaction game. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god, and I love that back air. That was a beautiful read. He knew what he, he had to do, and he just went through it, dude. Oh, oh, he read his soul. Down tilts the slide off, too. And just when JD seems to be getting oh, his... Oh, okay. I was going to say, just when JD seems to be getting his footing, Smokey seems to be turning up a little bit more. Yeah. But, uh... Here's that a chance to gonna... even it out. Oh, good read on the platform follow-up. Oh, wow. That was such a well-placed nair. I think what always like shocks me is like Fox's aerial speed is not not really his strong spot, but Fox players make it work. Oh, they, it's like in conjunction with all of his other characteristics, his aerial speed is very good. Is very what? Well. It's very good. Really? When you combine it with his dash speed and um, the size, the aerials that he has, and the height of his short hop, it all it all works together very well. Oof. All right, last stock, game five. Is this how it's gonna end? Smokey takes not much percent actually. That's out of that, so fairly unscathed. It sends such a message though, you know what I mean? Like he's gonna be so afraid now. Yeah, you're gonna see him rolling away from the ledge. He does not want to go near the, the edge. He had that scary situation. Oh yeah, he's trying desperately to get to center stage. Oh, and he just starts with an up smash. Both oh. of them are really rolling in. It's nerves. And that's gonna be All right, it. that's the tournament. Goes to JD. Good set. Smokey, uh, very, very upset. Well.